good luck trying to prove sex trafficking when you're dealing with adults who work in the in the entertainment business and have the chance to walk away. Who could leave? Who could walk away and leave? Walk away from everything. Walk out the door. Who could say, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to go to this party. Last time you were, you slipped me something. I don't want to engage in this particular type of sexual activity. I don't want you to do this to me. I don't want to risk STDs and death, dying of some overdose. I'm not going to do this anymore. Not only that, when people know exactly what they're going to, especially when it's a ditty party, you know flat out. But because people so much want to be a part of the entertainment world, they so much want to be a part of everything that it's about, they look the other way. And they figure it's a small price to pay. And I'll get my kink on. And when jurors hear that, they say, what are we doing here? What the hell are we involving ourselves for? If this person walked into this deliberately, you know, it's one thing when you have an adult. When you have children, sex, coercion, threat, uh, force, that's a different story. To put somebody in the position where they have to engage in sex, where they have to engage, by the way, in, in theft of, of, and trafficking in labor, in being a domestic. It's not always sex. There are people who come to this country who are, who are promised all of this greatness. Oh, you're going to be a part of the great American dream. And they come here thinking they're going to be a part of some, some financial system. And they have their passports taken. And they're relegated to that of being a, they're being a domestic or working in a place of, I mean, it, it, it's, it's horrible. They're frightened. That's a different story. That's a different story. When you're, in essence, kidnapped, false imprisonment, the whole notion of you are not free to leave. But in so many of these cases, as especially this, this Abercrombie and Fitch case, I came here and they fooled me. They told me to do things. They said they would help my career. So what did you do? Well, I had sex. I had sex with people, but I didn't know that it was a ruse. Wait a minute. You had sex with people? Well, I, you knew about these parties? Well, who didn't know about these parties? And you went there voluntarily? Yes, I did. Why did you go there voluntarily? Why did you do this? Why did you, why did you think this wise? What are you doing? That's the problem. Oh, I'd love to defend those cases. Not, not, that, not that I think people aren't coerced. But just in terms of being able to, to really provide a valued defense, that does kind of make sense. Listen, you never can consent to being a victim. But there are some times when you put yourself into a situation, when you put yourself into a, into a world view where you, by definition, Become the victim knowingly, wittingly, deliberately, knowingly and intelligently and with a full possession of your faculties. You know exactly what you're doing. You know who these people are. You know what this was about. And now we're finding out. And, and the worst part, what's even worse, is that people who truly are the victims of trafficking, they have their cases melded, blurred, and obscured into this so that everybody thinks, oh, this is another one of those cases, right? Yeah. Well, kids can't consent. And the worst is when parents put their kids into a situation like this where they find themselves in the position, in the position of being victims of victims of what amount of, um, amounts to just this horrible, horrible, terrible, vile, disgusting world of predation. It's horrible. Parents pimping their kids out. Parents selling their kids into porn. Parents doing this. The level of involvement, the level of disgust will keep you up at night. I don't ever want those cases to be obscured or forgotten or lumped into other versions of misunderstanding. These people are, without a doubt, the most sad, the most, the most um, um, uh, pathetic, heartbreaking. But then we have other people 
And by the way, you know, civil trials are one thing. Criminal is another. A proving, a, proving that you were harmed and you have to prove your case based upon the preponderance of the evidence, that's one thing. To go into court, to, that's, that's one thing. This is another. This is quite the other. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, so what we need to do is to understand one thing. First and foremost, let the discussion happen as well. In addition to us trying to ferret out these disgusting individuals, identifying them and the like, make sure we understand that when people think they're going to be a part of this world, this glamorous world of showbiz and the like, make sure you understand and make sure they understand that these people are by their very natures predators. These people who work in these industries see you coming in there as new meat and you mean nothing to them. Don't put yourself in the position first because as the cases will show you, there are people who are out scouring the internet to find new people to victimize and take advantage of. Does that make sense to you? Good. Good. And talk to your kids. Immunize them from this. Explain to them what it is. Don't feel like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin their, uh, their innocence. I understand. It's a good point. But no matter how young they are, they are never too young to be victimized. There's always somebody looking. And do you know what the new case is? What, in, in, what, what authorities are saying? What the preferred age range for kids in films and illicit activities? Zero to two. Newborns to two years old. You sick yet? You should be. Do me a favor, dear friends. Please. Subscribe to this channel, Lionel Legal. Like this video. That's the, that's the currency of uh, success in this platform to spread the holy word of truth. Hit that little bell so you're notified of live streams and new videos. And whatever you do, I ask you, my friend, to comment as you see.